Hey, this is Emily at Oz Inflatable Kayaks, and we're looking today at the tandem inflatable kayaks from Advanced Elements. There's quite a few in the range, and you might be wondering which one is right for you. So the first thing I usually consider with people is the weight. As you can see, some of these are pretty heavy, and it's not to say that you couldn't lift 24 kilograms. It's more to ask the question, do you want to? Now, if there's two of you, two adults say, and you're going tandem, um, and you're going to be doing that all the time, that's okay. It's pretty easy for two adults to lift. But I get a lot of customers that want to go solo sometimes or most of the time because these kayaks will do that. They'll do solo paddling. And that's where 24 kilograms is a bit of a drag to, for one person to lift. So have a think about it. I also get customers where it's one adult and say one child. And if the child can't really help you pick up the kayak, it might be a good idea to look down here at something lighter like the Island Voyage 2 kayak. But an important factor to consider is the size inside the kayak. So although our advanced frame convertible is a heavier kayak, it's also huge. I mean, look at this. They've got straight legs, both of them, and a thwart in there. Whereas comparably in the Island Voyage, which is significantly shorter, you've got very bent legs and you're not going to fit much else in there. You know, if you're trying to fit extra, you know, dogs or kids or whatnot into the Island Voyage with two adults, it might be a struggle. Whereas we fit me and my husband and our two small children into the Advanced Train Convertible Elite kayak, no problem. Okay, so that's one thing to think about. If you like the idea of the heavier kayaks, if they're gonna work for you with all of the other features, don't forget there is the kayak cart. So it straps onto the back of the kayak, you pick up the front and you can wheel it down to the water. Once you're on the water, the weight doesn't really matter. It's more getting to and from the water. This cart actually folds flat here and here, that folds up, the wheels pop off and you can stow it really easily, say under the deck, um, under the bungee in the front of your kayak. Um, the Evolution 2 is kind of somewhere in between. It, it's longer than the Island Voyage inside, but it actually is not quite as long as the Advanced Train Convertible, simply because, despite this picture here, your feet are designed to brace against the front there. There's not a lot of room underneath there. Um, so you do get a little bit of bent legs in this one. And then the Strategy 2 Pro is again somewhere in between. So you get foot pegs here that are adjustable and the seat straps are adjustable. So you can move, for example, this rear seat back if you need a bit more leg room and then the front one back and then adjust the foot pegs, which are here and here into the right position. But it's not as long as you can see as the Convertible Elite. So again, you've got a little bit less space for dogs and kids and for very long legs. Now the other thing you get for all that weight, of course, as well as space, is capacity. You can see that the capacity is quite a bit bigger for the bigger kayaks. And in actual fact, for the Advanced Train Convertible Elite here with the drop stitch floor, it's really more than 250. And for the Evolution 2, it's also more than 250. That's just the rating they've put on it. Um, but this kayak here, the Evolution, it has a huge amount of air in it. It's tremendously buoyant and rigid. You could fit quite a, a weight in that kayak. 181 for the down the other end for the Island Voyage 2. That's good enough for most um, adults. You know, your two average adult size adults would fit in that one fine with that weight limit. But if you had sort of two larger adults or if you were putting in a dog or a child as well, then you probably are pushing that weight limit. And again, the Strategy 2 Pro is somewhere in between. 227 is enough for, in most cases for two adults and a bit of gear to fit very comfortably. Now that capacity really matters also if you're doing um, an expedition and you need to load up with gear because when you're loading up with gear you need to add on the weight of the people as well as the weight of the gear now the other thing you get for that extra weight is performance and you can see it really well in this picture see how the convertible has this beautiful vertical bow it cuts through the water peels the water aside it's got a beautiful smooth hull shape uh, fit on the back and then another vertical stern they, they actually have aluminium ribs the advanced frame convertible and convertible elite inside not that you see them or install them they're just there but they give you this wonderful shape and so this kayak goes straight when it glides and it goes fast. It is a fast kayak, especially the convertible Elite with the drop stitch floor, really fast. In comparison, the Island Voyage 2, you can see it does not have the same bow and stern shape. It's sort of upturned and so it's more like pushing a barge through the water. Now it, it goes quite nicely, right? But for me, this is not something you take out for a long paddle. For me, the Island Voyage 2 is something you take out for an hour or so because it doesn't have the same pleasure of paddling or the same speed that you get out of something like the Convertible Elite. It does have a deep fin to help you with tracking, but it still waggles around, whereas the Convertible and the Convertible Elite go pretty straight. 
Now, when we look at the Straight Edge 2 Pro, that is somewhere in between. So it's got the aluminium rib frame at the front. It helps peel that water aside. It's got the deep fin, but it doesn't have the rib frame at the back and it doesn't have the same streamlined design of, of the convertible. It's also a sit on top kayak, which means it sits higher in the water. So you don't get quite as good speed or tracking as the convertible Elite, but it's still better than the Island Voyage 2. It's somewhere in between. Uh, then we have the Evolution 2. Now this one, speed-wise, I would say it's up there with the Advanced Frame Convertible and possibly the Convertible Elite. There's not a huge amount in it, but that Convertible Elite really is very fast and it's a bit narrower, which just reduces the surface area. The other thing I love about the Convertible Elite is it's not so wind affected. The Straight Edge 2 Pro and the Evolution 2, they sit higher over the water, if that makes sense. So they catch the wind a bit more, whereas the Convertible Elite and the Convertible, they sit lower in the water and, and glide through and you get a little bit less wind affected. Stability wise, I thought this was a good picture. It shows how stable these kayaks are. You can literally stand up and paddle. So in terms of taking dogs and kids and fishing, they're all good for that. They are all more than stable enough. The only thing really to consider with fishing is uh, rod holders. The Straight Edge 2 Pro has rod holders behind the seat. The rest of the kayaks don't have rod holders, but you can still make fishing work. They're certainly durable enough. Um, and dogs, uh, basically all of them are good for dogs. Just check you've got enough room if it's a bigger dog for the Island Voyage 2 and the Straight Edge 2 Pro. And if you're taking out the regular convertible, the advanced frame convertible with the soft floor, you might want to invest in a Dura floor, which is basically a high density foam black mat that you can put on to protect that floor. But otherwise, all of them are great for kids, dogs, fishing. The advanced frame convertible and convertible elite have an added bonus, which is that they're suitable for open water. And they do that by this thing called the double deck conversion. So this is a deck that zips on. You can see the zipper line. It goes right around here. And it gives you two cockpits, each have inflatable combing. And as you can see here, you can then put a spray skirt on. So you could go out in Tasmania on a choppy day and basically stay warm and stay dry. And that really opens up where you can go. You know, you can suddenly do multi-day expeditions in open water with this kayak. Or you can do a short trip, but on a cold, windy day. Um, so it really makes it a very versatile kayak, the um, Advanced Frame Convertible and Convertible Elite. The other kayak that's uh, open water suitable in the tandems is the Straight Edge 2 Pro. Now this picture is the old Straight Edge 2, but it gives you the idea. Basically, it's a sit on top self bailing kayak. So what that means is water can slosh over the side and it will drain out through ports bit where the floor meets the side tubes. So the great thing about that is it means it's also suitable for white water. They call this a crossover kayak because it does flat water and it does up to class three white water whereas the rest of the kayaks, the rest of the tandems can do up to class two. The downside is that you get wet, basically. <laughs> so if you want an open water kayak and you like sit on tops, so you like the open deck style and you're in a warm climate, it's a really good option. But if you need to stay warm and dry, you probably want to consider the convertible or the convertible elite kayak. Now, last of all, setup. So these are all very easy to set up. They're all unfold, inflate, clip in seat. There's no assembly or anything like that required. It's really a case of the amount of air that's going into them that's determining the setup time. With the exception of the Evolution 2, this one you could argue it should sit over here. There's an awful lot of air in this one. If you go to full pressure, 14 PSI for both chambers and you use a, a hand pump, it would definitely be longer than eight minutes, okay? It would be over here. The reason I've popped it in here is you, you can get away with less than 14 PSI. Um, I'm pretty lightweight. If I was going out with another fairly lightweight person, there's no way I'd bother with putting that much air in, you know. I'd maybe try six or eight PSI and see how it went. Um, obviously you want rigidity that's the really key feature and of course you need to be buoyant you need to be safe um, and I use an electric pump and so the electric pump just sort of does it for you so you know, it's pretty easy the reason I use electric pump is high pressure drop stitch can be hard work with a hand pump the straight edge 2 pro has a drop stitch floor the convertible elite has a drop stitch floor but neither of those are very high pressure Okay, so they're fairly easy to inflate with a hand pump, but if you're going to go for the full hog with this, the Evolution 2, uh, I would consider investing in um, an electric pump. When it comes to comfort, which is really important if you're planning on doing any sort of longer kayaks, you know, half day, full day, multi day. Uh, my probably number one pick is the Advanced Frame Convertible. That soft floor is just so lovely under your bum. 
Um, it really is like sitting on a marshmallow. But overall, I do love the Convertible Elite more. I think the, the improved performance sort of makes it worth it. And, and I don't really ever sit in the Convertible Elite thinking, oh boy, I wish I had that soft floor. I still find it very comfortable. You've got a high density foam seat under your bum, which lifts you up off that drop stitch floor. And you've got a very supportive um, seat back, which is great. They all have a beautiful seat back. I don't find the Island Voyage one quite as well shaped as the others. And I find the Evolution 2 kayak quite hard. So because it's drop stitch, which is very high pressure, it's it feels almost like sitting in a hard shell kayak. So I don't find that quite as comfortable over longer periods. The sides are hard, the base is hard. The seat is, very, is still quite supportive, but not quite as good as, say, the Advanced Frame Convertible Elite or the Straight Edge 2 Pro. So overall, you get great support. All of them except the Island Voyage 2 either come with or you can buy uh, foot support as well, which is really important for a lot of people for their backs. That's a very individual thing. Kind of depends on your pelvis shape. Um, but they're all quite good. Like I said, they're all supportive um, and they're all nice to sit in for fairly long periods. All exceptionally durable as well. Okay, the only thing you need to worry about is heat, basically. And this goes for any inflatable kayak on the market. If you're taking your kayak out of the water and you're not packing up straight away, just let some pressure out. If you're going out again, it's not hard to top it up with pressure. Okay, but we don't want to leave it in the heat uh, out of the water. Um, so I hope this gives you a good insight into the Advanced Elements Tandem Inflatable Kayaks. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. This is Emily at Oz Inflatable Kayaks.